One thing that I see more and more people struggle with is finally reaching a goal body weight after months of hard dieting just to end up being very disappointed with the type of physique that they have because they've learned all about calories in, calories out, getting their protein intake, tracking their macros, staying active, but then they end up with a body that's skinny fat and it's very far from that athletic and fit look that they were initially aiming for. And then they have an epiphany that they didn't have much muscle to begin with, that they didn't build much muscle, and that they have no idea how to actually build muscle. And this is why in this video, I'm gonna share with you three things you need to know to build muscle faster naturally. And these are things that I wish I knew on my own journey because I would have definitely seen better results. And I wanna make sure you incorporate these into your own plan so you can finally get the type of physique that you want. So let's dive right into it. So the first thing you need to do if you're currently skinny fat after dieting is to stop digging yourself into a deeper hole with dieting and get out of fat loss into a muscle building phase. And this could be a gain taining phase where you stay at the same weight and you're looking to build more muscle or a lean bulk where you had a little bit of extra calories to look to gain weight, but the majority of that being muscle. But the biggest change here is going to be your training because the sign that you haven't built muscle while you were losing body fat initially is not a good sign. Beginners are supposed to be able to build muscle while losing body fat. And this is where doubling down on circuit training, running, high intensity intervals, cycling and whatnot, isn't gonna cut it. Those are not muscle growth focused activities. You need a hypertrophy, muscle building focused workout. My recommendation here is training each body part two to three times per week, 10 to 12 sets per body part per week, and then, picking compound exercises that will be your benchmark exercise for each of the main body parts in the six to 15 rep range. And what that's gonna allow you is accurate assessment of whether you're actually progressing or not. Because a lot of people make the mistake of using the wrong metrics to assess their progress. They're looking at how exhausted they are or how sweaty they got during the workout or how many calories they burned during the workout using their Fitbit or Apple Watch. None of those things actually matter when it comes to assessing muscle growth. The closest thing and the most accurate thing you have at this moment, aside from a biopsy or an MRI, which isn't very practical for us, is your performance. Are you getting more reps? Are you able to add more weight? Are you able to do the reps and weight with less effort and better technique? Those are the main things that you should be focused on. And you shouldn't be changing your benchmark exercise all the time. If you picked push-ups for your chest, you don't wanna be doing push-ups one workout, then doing benches the next week, and then doing incline next week, then you're doing dumbbells next week, and dips, and just constantly changing it. How are you able to diagnose whether you're progressing or not? So commit to those benchmark exercises, keep them in there, so you have the structure and the consistency to add accurately assess the data without the noise and you will know whether what you're doing is working or not. And that's gonna really help you address the root cause of the problem of skinny fat, which is that lack of muscle. And when you build muscle, when you add the strength, you're finally going to have the physique that you're looking for. Now, speaking of progress, the second most important thing that you can do to build muscle faster is optimizing execution and training quality. Especially with beginners, I see those who are focused on beating the logbook, progressive overload, training harder, often do that at the expense of good technique. So you'll see that they're not using the full range of motion they're capable of, they're not going all the way down on lifts, they're using half reps in certain movements, or they're not controlling the eccentric, or they're performing movements completely wrong, like turning a lat pull down into a tricep push down because they didn't bother to check the video and how it's done correctly or they're not hitting the like button in my videos, which is even worse. All that to say, really, you can have the perfect program in the world. If you're not executing it correctly, you're not gonna see the gains that you're looking for. And when I say 10 to 12 sets per week, I really do mean high quality sets. I don't mean half-assing the technique, which is what a lot of people are doing, and then they're wondering why they're stuck in a plateau. And often, when they do get stuck in a plateau with 10 to 12 sets per week, what they end up doing is they end up increasing the amount of sets with bad technique. So they go up to 14, 16, 18 sets thinking that quantity is gonna solve it, but it's not. You're just increasing the risk of injury because now you're also using weight that is inappropriate for a ton more volume because you can use it due to bad technique and all of that just leads you nowhere. The goal here is for you to learn how to execute the lift to maximize tension on the target muscle while minimizing stress on your joints. This is the sustainability aspect of lifting. This is playing the long game because you're not gonna build muscle overnight. It doesn't matter what heroic effort you can pull with some random weight with poor technique in one workout. 
If you get yourself hurt, you're out of the game and you need to stay in the game to enable growth to happen. You need to be patient and focus on that quality. As an experienced lifter, when I walk into a gym, it's very obvious when I see a beginner that's trying to impress other people with how much weight they're lifting. It looks ridiculous. They're using dumbbells, they're completely inappropriate, and they're trying to just throw the weights around. Well, what is really impressive is actually seeing a beginner who's doing movements with proper technique, appropriate weight, and methodically focused on tracking their workouts, executing each one of those sets and doing a good job because this person is going to progress for sure over the course of the next months and years while that ego lifter is either going to be stuck and lost motivation and go home and never going to return to the gym or they're going to get hurt and that's going to get them in trouble. So you really want to be in that category of the person that's playing the smart game, working on the technique and you're going to see some amazing results. Now, speaking of great results and building muscle faster, the third thing you need to learn is how to manage your fatigue effectively. Because as you implement these strategies, you're training harder, using compound lifts, getting closer to failure, improving your quality of your workouts, you are improving your performance, but you're also getting more fatigue. And over time, you will eventually hit a wall. And a lot of beginners get caught off guard by this because they're used to progressing week by week, workout to workout, that honeymoon phase, that new begins phase, and eventually, that stops working. And this is where you need to start thinking more about one step back, two, three, four steps forward. And this is where strategic deloads as a part of your training strategy becomes so important. I wish I knew about deloads earlier. I only found out about them about four or five years into my journey. And then I started using them a bit later and they do three amazing things. One, by taking a deload week, you actually get to see what your true performance is like because you remove that fatigue and I can finally see how strong you got. Number two, you give your connective tissue a break, which is very important. I wish I did this earlier because it would have saved me from a lot of tendonitis issues. Number three, it makes training exciting again. Because I know even up leading up to a deload, I'm gonna push stronger, just knowing that there's a deload coming up. And then when I come back after a deload, I'm more excited about training harder and seeing where I'm at. So I do even more and better and higher quality work. So deloads are a fantastic tool that I would recommend implementing. So for every fifth or sixth week of training, you can take that light a week. You can reduce the number of sets by one or two, depending on how many sets you do. A good rule of thumb is just cutting it in half and it's going by that. And you can also time it with your holidays or vacations to leverage those shorter workouts to save some time to spend some extra time outside of the gym with family or friends and this in combination with managing your sleep and also doing other recovery strategies outside of the gym taking relaxing days is going to do wonders for your progress because at some point if you're someone like myself who likes to work really, really, really hard at this, you have to start thinking more about recovery as a way to leverage to get more progress. It's not just about harder and harder and harder training. I like to push myself, but I also understand that there's only so far I can push myself if I don't recover correctly. So deload weeks have been that tool for me to help me manage that training fatigue in combination with the rest of the stuff that happens outside of the gym. So at some point you will have to start thinking about training like a chess game. It's not about linear progress. It's not just about about head through the wall. It's really about playing the smart game. And so you plan for progress in the future as an advanced lifter, I sometimes plan for three months ahead or four months ahead to progress in a certain lift. And that's normal is this game is a long term game. It's about consistency over intensity. It's about really dialing things in as much as you can, of course, as much as time allows, and then really challenging yourself, but also taking a step back when it's appropriate. So you don't run into a wall. So you can continue progressing and reaching your maximum potential. Now what's going to help with that is making sure you hit that subscribe button below and the notifications by hitting that bell icon as well. Details for coaching if you want to work with me are in the description below. Check those out as well. I'll leave another video here about skinny fat. So check out that video and I'm going to see you right there.